Hello friends, welcome to another review video here on my channel. Today I'm talking about the Urban Decay Naked Skin Shape Shifter. So this is a contouring slash kind of multi-purpose face palette and there's a lot going on in this little space here. And I can try to contain my excitement for this but I'm just going to put it out there. I think this is a brilliantly made product. I think the design on this is so good. I think Urban Decay has done some really great well thought out palettes. My mind goes to their lip palettes and how nicely packaged that was. I think a lip palette is hard to put together and keep it neat and they did some great lip palettes recently. And this is another one of those things where I look at it and I think whoever's responsibility this was, like they freaking nailed it because you've got half cream in this palette, half powder. They have done a good job in actually separating those so the integrity of the products is so well maintained. It's kept totally separate. I mean, you've got this mirror here and there's a mirror on each side. They wouldn't have had to have done that, but it makes it so convenient when you're using powder products. You know, you can look right in here here and then you flip it over and you've got your creams. I mean, I love that. I love that attention to detail. Also, this is a product that is out in two shades. So I've got the lighter of the two or the light medium shift as they call it. And then there's a medium dark shift. And the differences in these I think are pretty pronounced. In both the creams and the powders, I mean, you're getting a whole different shade range from one to the next. And I have not used the darker one yet because I mean, for my skin tone, the light one is pretty much all that I need. But if you've use this one and you could share in the comments section the darker of the two you know how that's worked have the tones been appropriate for your skin these are the powders side by side and I can pop up some pictures too just kind of swatching them out so you can see exactly how different they are you are getting much deeper contouring powders here um, in the darker of the two and the light kind of skin tone powder over here or light beige powder is a little bit more of a banana type powder in this one and then the highlight here is more of a like peachy golden highlight, whereas here it's more of a pearl. And then on the cream side in the dark palette, I mean your highlight is more peachy again. And unlike the lighter palette having a couple tones of peach corrector, here you've got a yellow and a deeper orange. And then these would be like your cream, highlight, and contour shades. And by highlight, I don't mean like shimmery, glowy highlight, but just something that's going to add like light and brightness to the skin. And those are both, of course, deeper than what's in the light palette. So I just wanted to lay it out there that that that's what's in the deeper of the two palettes. But again, packaging, I cannot argue with this one bit. This is a really great design. Look how compact that is. And it's not like you're getting tiny pans of product in here either. There is no wasted space whatsoever and everything is kept so nicely separated. Oh magnetic closure. Durr, I love that. But I am wearing every element of this palette on my skin today. I thought it was quick, you know, because everything's kind of all in one place. I thought it was therefore very simplified because, you know, you don't have to do a lot of picking and choosing. You just got to decide would I fall into the light to medium category or the medium dark. The blendability of the products was really good and very simple. I think it's very high quality, nice feeling powders in here. And I think the creams are really good and really easy to work with as well. I do have a couple of small complaints with the corrector shades that are in um, this one that I've been using. And I think I'm just going to start there because I did a full application so you could see this stuff going on also. And I'll just go in order of the way I put this stuff on. So I have a foundation on my skin. I use the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir today, which is a straight up uh, medium coverage foundation for me. So it's still leaving, you know, circles and things to cover up on my skin. So the first thing I do is I go into the deeper peach in the correctors here and I use that right around my darkest place which would be the innermost corner right here on like the side of my nose and then I use a little bit of the lighter peach kind of dabbing over the top of that and covering the whole area kind of on the top of my cheek. Then I kind of find myself blending one or both of those shades with the light um, highlight color in here, not the shimmery highlight but just the base color color type thing. Doing that can kind of create a bit of a concealer for me around areas where I might have a little redness or a blemish. I can blend one of the peach tones with that and get more of a beige. And I can use that lighter shade to just highlight anywhere, you know, down the nose, wherever. And I could certainly blend this in with my fingers if I wanted to. But I actually do like this brush that I got for free. Um, well, it's a VIB Rouge brush, so I didn't really get it free, did I? Um, but it's the Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush. And I just kind of use that to dab this 
stuff in all around my eye area and it's just a nice little blending synthetic brush. Beauty blenders work great with these products as well, but they're just not difficult to blend. So I really think whatever manner you choose is fine. Now there is something I do need to say about these correctors right here. All of these creams from here to here are kind of like the same formula. This highlight, the shimmery highlight is a little bit more dry than everything else, but I feel like everything else here is like the same consistency. It's relatively thin, very smooth, does not stay um, super creamy, definitely not sticky at all on the skin, but it's just not super thick either. And I almost could have used a little more thickness out of these shades. And I'm kind of coming at this critique from a place of like back when I had melasma, very severe discoloration up in here, mask of pregnancy it's sometimes referred to as, that took some real work to cover up. And not every corrector worked just perfectly with it. Like just because I reached for something peachy didn't mean it was automatically like gone. And I'm pretty sure the way these are a little bit thinner peachy correctors, they may not have done the job there. For like run of the mill under eye circles or a little bit of darkness you need to brighten up there. I think they're really quite good for those purposes. Maybe the deepest, darkest under eye circles, they might not totally be able to go there with. But I feel like for me on a day-to-day -day basis, while it does vary a bit, um, I always have some amount of darkness on the under eye area. Sometimes it's pretty dark and sometimes it's kind of like moderate. And this stuff seems to work well there, but for um, dark patches on the skin, really dark age spots that some PG correctors seem to work well with, like Benefit Erase Paste always worked well for me there. These may not be thick enough for that. But anyway, back into application, you could certainly take these creams and like totally do yourself up and do the light stuff and then have dark stuff down here. You know, just really dab all these colors on at once. But I kind of like to get one level of it blended and then go in with the cream contour, which I like to use my Real Techniques contouring brush. I think this is so perfect. Like this brush, it practically blends itself. Like I'm not, I don't feel like I'm doing any work here to use this. It also helps that these are very very easy to blend creams because they're not too thick. So my main place for using that is in the hollow of the cheek and kind of around the hairline area. So I just get that all blended in there. And then something I rarely do, but I decided to do for this video is take the lighter shade that's right beside the contour and use that down below the hollow of the cheek. And that can kind of create a bit more contrast and really make that um, cheek contour pop even more if you're into that. And so once that's all blended out, that's my cream stuff for now. We will come back to that cream highlight in a second. But then I kind of flip the palette over and you've got your powders here. Now I'm not saying you have to use all of this stuff every time you do your makeup because you could maybe just go with the creams and leave it at that or you could just do powders. But obviously for the purposes of showing you as much as possible in this video, I'm trying to give you the whole shebang. So the first thing I went to powder wise was this light matte powder here. And I used my uh, small tapered brush from Elf and this makes a nice little under eye setting powder. It's really a perfect tone. It's a very nice feel. I mean, it feels very smooth. It actually adds a little coverage, but it's not too thick for that area. You know what I mean? I definitely tap off the excess on my brush though, because it can kind of pick up quite a bit. And then I can use that very same powder and take it around my nose, onto my forehead a little bit. For me, it's kind of becoming like this all purpose setting powder in this compact. And then the lighter the two contour shades, I just use a little bit of that to sort of set the cream contour. Not that that cream is like screaming to be set by any means. It's not sticky. It does not have any sort of major texture. But in a way, going over it with a little powder, it does give this added kind of smoothness to the skin. Maybe a little bit more of a mattified, like airbrushed look to it, I guess. So I use my e.l.f. complexion brush just to very lightly go over the hollow of the cheek area there. Um, didn't use a lot of product by any means, but I do really like that shade. It's a nice tone of contour. And then this shade here really strikes me as much more of a bronzer. So I like using that right around the hairline because it makes me think more of where the sun is naturally hitting and it just really warms up the skin a bit more. I even like taking that right over the tops of the cheeks because it just looks so natural in that way. So I really enjoy these tones. I like what's happening here. It's a nice feeling powder just across the board, pigmented, easy to work with. But let's talk a little bit of high highlighting here because for this I go back to the cream and I do a little layering and this cream you might swatch this in a store and think well there's not much going on here with this cream highlight like it's not super bold and vivid
vivid and it just isn't. It gives you a pretty subtle look and I just dab it on with my fingers a little bit on the top of the cheekbone but you pair that then with this beautiful powder highlight and it's so gorgeous. This is a beautiful highlight that they've put in this palette and I use my Moda Highlight and Glow brush with that and it just it pairs so nicely and it looks even more pronounced on top of that cream which is not a sticky cream at all like I mentioned it's a teeny bit drier in formula compared to the other creams in the palette but I just cannot get over how beautiful that glow is and I have not always been a fan of Urban Decay highlights like I just can't really think about that many that I've been super wowed by uh, I'm kind of flashing back to that palette that they put out around the holidays and it was like a total no-go for me but what they've got in here is really really good and so my finished look using this palette I think I've got more you know contoured and shaded skin definitely and I've got this whole variety of ways to achieve that you know some days like today it's the whole shebang some days I can just take bits and pieces um, but I will show you what it looks like with a blush added in because I do think that adds a little extra something and if I were to say something was missing from this palette which I don't know if that's really fair to say that it's missing because this is meant to be like a contouring product I'll put it this way the one additional face thing that I might need in addition to a foundation would be a blush and so today I used this ombre radiance je ne sais quoi blush from it cosmetics it's beautiful yes it is and so I just pop that on the apples of the cheeks and finished look I am very pleased with I'm matte where I want to be matte I'm glowy where I want to be glowy I'm contoured where I need to be contoured and I must say it's got good staying power as well especially when you are doing this kind of two-step method and you're using creams and you're setting it with some powder everything's really locked in using this light powder as kind of an under eye setting powder really pretty effective there as well oh my gosh I almost forgot I can't use a multitasking palette like this without saying like oh and you can use it on the eyes so I also used it on my eyes today um, it's not even really tutorial worthy but I showed you I put the lighter of the two contours in my crease I also added a little bit of the deeper one in the outer part of the crease as well um, put a little bit of the creamy shade all over the lid and some of that highlight shade just around my inner corner and that is the eyeshadow look today so yes it can do that too and just the icing on the cake this nice compact design is really a beautiful palette you can see there's a texture there on the inside but then they've totally got this smooth plastic on the outside, the magnetic closure, the double mirror, the full separation of cream and powder. It's going to run you $45 and I think that's actually a very fair price for this product. I think the quality is completely there with both creams and powders and it's just really giving you a lot. So that's my review. Thank you guys so much for taking time to watch and I will see you again very soon. Bye!